Shortly after midnight on New Year's Eve, the statue of Eric Morecambe disappeared from its plinth on the promenade. Anger mounts in Morecambe, as the town council state that they fear that the statue of Eric Morecambe may never be recovered. It is now over a week since the statue of Eric Morecambe disappeared from the promenade, and the police seem no nearer to solving the mystery. A public meeting has been organised in Morecambe to allow the police the opportunity to explain what they are doing to locate the missing statue, as an increasing number of residents are now asking, where is Eric? A meeting is taking place here tonight. The meeting is to report on the progress of the investigation into the disappearance of the Eric Morecambe statue from Morecambe Promenade. I'm about to go into the meeting as a member of Morecambe Movie Makers. To be on the safe side, I've brought my video camera with me. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is James Doddington, and I'm here today to chair this meeting to discuss what's happened to the statue of Eric Morecambe that has disappeared off the promenade. For the benefit of all present, I will ask my colleagues to introduce themselves. My name's Peter Parks. I'm the Parks Manager. And if that statue would have been put where I said it should have been, in Happy Mount Park, it would have been patrolled and secured and safe, and it wouldn't have been pinched. I'm Ian Jackson. I'm the Tourist man Manager. And Peter keeps harping on about where this statue should have been placed. We put it on the promenade where it's going to be in a prominent position and everybody can gentlemen, visit it. Gentlemen, 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 we're not here to argue the toss about where the statue should be. We're here to find out where it is now. I'm Councillor John Hart and I represent the Central Ward. And I'm very concerned that the loss of this statue will have a seer via impact on trade, and particularly on the reopening of the Winter Gardens. Oh, for God's sake, not the old chestnut about the flaming Winter Gardens again. Oh yes, Peter, you are a fine one to talk, after the blobby line, if you ask me. Oh, gentlemen, gentlemen, we're not here to find out what's become of the statue. I'm sure that as soon as this meeting's over, the Chief Inspector wants to get back to his work. Now, Councillor. Councillor Ernest Gravitt. I just want to know who's stolen the bloody thing. Because it's solid bronze and worth a mint to melt down. I just know it has not gone through my scrap yard. Thank, thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor. Now, Chief Inspector. I'm Chief Inspector Colin Smythe Walker, and I'm heading the investigation into the removal and disappearance <coughs> of the statue. So, Inspector, what can you tell us? As you know, the statue was removed from the plinth after midnight on New Year's Eve, and so far we've been unable to locate its whereabouts. I just know it hasn't gone through any of my scrapyards. Not that you'd tell us if it had done. Gentlemen, gentlemen, look, all this sniping will get us nowhere. So, Inspector, what can you tell us about the crime so far, how our inve investigation is progressing? Have you went, what leads do you have? There are lines of inquiry that we're following. Well, at least you've got some leads that you're following up then. Not exactly. Okay. We have dismissed the obvious one. And what is that? We're fairly certain that the statue was not removed for scrap. <laughs> so we're confident that it has not gone to a scrapyard either locally or anywhere in the UK. It's too well known as a statue as it was unveiled by the Queen. And uh, as we know, that even scrap uh, dealers won't touch anything that has a connection with royalty. Told you it hadn't come into many of my scrap yards. All right, Councillor. No more. We know how honest you are, and we all know what you get up to. Say that again, Donington, and I'll put my boys onto you. <laughs> <laughs> dear, dear. 
So, Inspector, Chief Inspector, Chief Inspector, if you ask you, when my colleagues have finished arguing, can you tell us what leads you have found? Yes, this is rather an unusual line of inquiry, really. There is an organisation that operates in this town that has both the skills and the reason to take the statue. The statue is famous, and this organisation has been trying for some time to put more on the map, so to speak. So what makes you think that this um, group are connected with this missing statue? You're the head of the tourist department. Yes. And is it true that you gave a miniature of the statue as a prize for a competition for these people last year? Yes. He actually uh, wanted three and tried always to get the uh, other two, <coughs> even by going to the newspapers about it. But uh, what has that got to do with the theft of the statue? Excuse me one moment. There are three scenarios here. One, they just took the statue to get some added publicity for their organisation by keeping it for a while and then returning it, claiming that they found it. Two, they'll hold it to ransom until you provide them with two more statues for future competition, then return the statue. Or three, They'll melt it down to make a number of statues as prizes for future competitions. All three would, of course, get Morecambe publicity. Why do you think that this group could carry out this theft? Various clues add up to making them the likely culprits. The big question at the moment is, who are the ones involved? It must only be a small section of the group, or else somebody would have blabbed in the pub by now. Mm. Please go on, Inspector. Thank you. Firstly... There's the film director, who, last year, would stop at nothing to promote the competition. Secondly, we know of another member who is capable of doing the smelting. We have film evidence on the organisation's website of him melting down similar objects. Thirdly, another member has con connections with a metalworking firm on White Lund. They have the lifting gear and transport to remove the statue and the storage facility to keep it under wraps. Another member is an ex-ship's captain and it would make a great figurehead to remind him of his days at sea if he put it in his garden. And he has a boat that could be brought up alongside the seawall at high tide. We also have another member who is a climber and his skills with ropes would make him a very useful member of the group. Surely, Chief Inspector, the theft could not have been carried out in that way um, without someone with inside knowledge. I mean, there's a surveillance camera looking at it. Yes, well, that is another point. One of their members is an ex-policeman who would have access to these cameras. Need I say any more? It looks like the place is going to try and blame blame on us. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, it's a terrible place. It's a good place. It's a good place. It's a really good place. There is, of course, another scenario. Because you as a council have refused to consider putting up the statue of Ernie next to Eric, Eric's just decided to up and go. Fed up with a lot of you. And, of course, that makes you responsible Chief Inspector, for Chief Inspector, that's the most ridiculous idea I've ever heard of. Excuse me. That's my phone. I've told them not to ring me down at the meeting. I've, I've told you not to... Oh, all right, then. It's about the statue. Hello? Yes? That's utterly ridiculous. You can't be serious. I can't believe what you're telling me. You realise we're all going to be made a laughing stock. Once the national press get hold of this, Morecambe will get plenty of publicity, all right. It won't be the right sort of publicity. Just hold on. Well, Inspector. Chief Inspector. Chief Inspector, I owe you an apology. I've just heard something more ridiculous. It appears that on New Year's Eve, the mayor got drunk. He climbed on the statue. He fell off, naturally, and rolled down the steps. While he was down the steps, he sent a text message to his chief of security and asked him to have the 
statue removed because it was a health hazard on the grounds of health and safety. I ask you, on the grounds of health and safety. The following morning, he was so drunk the night before he couldn't remember what had happened. And he's gone on holiday for a week. He's just come back. Now he's asking where the statue is. And there's more. But have you ever heard anything so, so ridiculous before? What do you think of it so far? Rubbish! The mayor for his part says he can not recall anything about it. Can't recall giving the instruction. But as it was a text message, the local paper has now got hold of that off the telephone, and so the mayor has accepted the situation and has instructed that the statue should be returned to its plinth. I think at this point, ladies and gentlemen, I will call this meeting to a close. Thank you for your attention, and I bid you good evening. Thank you. Yeah, we'll go